Yo, what's going on guys? Johnny GB here bringing you guys week number six of the Extreme Battle League, the XBL. I was asked by Papacy to join into the league and it is just a fun league to be in. A lot of broken stuff as you can see by Randy's team there. And we, uh, yeah, I mean, we are taking Randy HLD, member of the GBA D League, coach of the Texas Rangers. So what you guys see on his screen, on this screen, a Naga Autodel, a Mega Metagross, a Lolan Ninetales. Probably a very good core right there, seeing as um, you get Aurora Veil, you get Mega Metagross, Naga Autodel, you got Stealth Rocker in Mudsdale. So, I mean... He got a pretty solid team. Now, over on my side, we have is a Trick Room team going this week. We have a Trick Room Stack Attacker, uh, Trick Room Mesprit, Minimum Speed, Magirna, uh, Bulky Zapdos to take on Mega Metagross, uh, Specially Defensive AV Magirna to take on Naga Onadel. Got a Bulky Tangrowth, Dragon Dance uh, Salamence with Yachi Berry, just in case the Ninetales does have Ice Shard. So we're going to get right into this battle. Um, pretty much I prepped this team for as best as I could against uh, Randy's team. Uh, that was pretty much the only thing I could do is try and prep the best. He's going to lead off with his um, Mega Metagross as I'm going to lead off with my Mesprit. Now, here turn one, not 100% sure on what his plan is to do with Mega Metagross, but for me... What I can do now is fire off a free Thunder Wave. Because if he goes Mudsdale, that's fine. If he goes Naga Onadale, I can Thunder Wave it. If he stays in, I can Thunder Wave it. Mega Metagross's speed is now, I think it's like one fourth. So that's something to take note that I didn't really pay attention to is the one fourth damage. But anyway, he's going to go for the Stealth Rock as I do go for the Thunder Wave. So. A turn in which he thought he was trading rocks, uh, I actually end up getting the paralysis on this Mega Metagross. So next turn I can actually get my stealth rocks up, which is fine by me. I can get rocks up, I paralyze the Metagross, first two turns are, are, go are going to plan. Like there's nothing I can complain about these turns, they're perfect turns in my eyes. Strategy that I had planned out worked. So he's actually going to go for the Ice Punch here, pretty much just trying to see if I go out into um, my Tangrowth or not. So I figured this thing would have Ice Punch, it'd have Meteor Mash, and it'll have Earthquake. It needs those three moves. It was that fourth move I wasn't sure of. He ended up actually bringing the Stealth Rock, so me looking on his side of the field, no hazard removal, so the rocks are here to stay. So Nine Tails has taken 25%. Pincer's taken 25%. Everything else except uh, Mudsdale and Mega Metagross are taken 12%. So hazards are up. We're good to go. This turn, I'm just clicking U-turn so I can go out into uh, something to check it. Instead, he gets the crit and the freeze on the turn I was going to U-turn and pretty much just go out to something like Zapdos to take care of this Mega Metagross. Instead, he ends up getting the freeze on me, and there's nothing I can do at this point. I don't want to switch in Zapdos because now I'm taking Rocky Helmet. I'm, ta I'm not Rocky Helmet. I'm taking Ice Punch and Stealth Rock, which probably will be enough to take out my Zapdos. So at this point, I just have to sack off my Mesprit, which is unfortunate because that's one of my Trick Room setters for Magirna that I wanted to have. So I just go out to my stack attacker here. Um, and this is mostly to try and see his move set. Pretty much to see if he does have the earthquake or if he doesn't. Now, I go out to Zapdos here. I could have gone Tangrowth, uh, but Zapdos to me was the play uh, just to scout to see if he has the earthquake because now I don't have anything to switch into an ice punch. So, he will show off the Earthquake, so I know he has Earthquake, I know he has Stealth Rock, I know he has Ice Punch. Not sure what his fourth and final move is. In all honesty, he probably could have had Rock Polish and foregone Steel Stab because he doesn't really need Steel Stab versus my team, or even Psychic Stab 
for that matter. I'm just going to fire off a discharge here. Uh, just no drawback play. Gets off good damage. I opted for discharge over Thunderbolt in case um, I try going for the paralysis. Now, I am static defog. Uh, so, I mean, there was multiple options in which I could have um, gone for paralysis on this Mega Metagross, whether it's from static or discharge, but the main thing was I was trying to paralyze it so that I could slow it down. Mesprit ultimately ended up doing that. So here I'm just going to fire off a roost. And what actually scared me from this roost is I could have ended up dying to an earthquake. I was really hoping he didn't make the prediction here and go for the earthquake because that would have done a tremendous amount of damage to my Zapdos. Instead, he's going to show his fourth and final move, the Zen Headbutt, which unfortunately misses for him. So as of right now, I have a full HP Zapdos. So I am good to go. So here's where I was being very careful. I fire off another Discharge, which weakens his Mega Metagross. But what worries me is if my Zapdos kills this, his Naga Anadel comes in and sets up a nasty plot. And when I was playing this battle, I was not thinking about my Magirna's speed and what his Mega Metagross speed is. None of that was actually going through my mind uh, during this battle. So I withdraw, I go out to my Magirna on the Ice Punch to pretty much just take small chip damage. Thinking, you know what? I can click Volt Switch here with Magirna. His Mega Metagross dies. And now I am able to go back into something that can take on the Naga Anadel that comes in potentially. Nowhere was I thinking that my Magirna is slower than this thing. Even if it's paralyzed, he's going to fire off the Earthquake and severely cripple my Magirna. So one, just bad, bad thinking on my part. Uh, really was just not thinking about if I end up actually killing. Uh, I if I am not faster. That's that's where I was trying to get at. Is I really wasn't thinking that my Magirna is slower than it. Had I thought about that, I probably stay in with Zapdos kill it with Discharge, because Zapdos is uh, there for two reasons. Nagana, or not Nagana, no, Mega Metagross and Suicune, because that's all I have for those two Pokemon. So here gives me a free chance to go out into my Stack Attacka, and pretty much just set up a Trick Room. I have no issue setting up a Trick Room here, because there's not much he can do against it. He's going to go out to Debbie the Mudsdale. Now, I do have a dedicated Mudsdale switch in. That is my Tangrowth. Mudsdale can't do anything to my Tangrowth. So I just make that basic switch in of going into my Tangrowth, scouting to see what this Mudsdale is, uh, whether he's leftovers potentially. Or actually, no, he already took Stealth Rock damage, so he's not leftovers. Maybe if he's possibly Choice Banded or Expert Belt, not really sure what this Mudsdale can be, seeing as Mega Metagross was his Stealth Rocker. I would assume this thing's probably choice banded, something along those lines, maybe soft sand. So your seat, Earthquake does minimal. Now here, I figure the Naga Anadel's coming. So I fire off a free Earthquake. I have no reason not to fire off an Earthquake. So he will go to the Naga Anadel. I fire off the Earthquake, and it's going to do a tremendous amount of damage to this Naga Anadel. It actually makes me extremely happy. I barely miss out on the KO here. But for me to get all this damage off on the Naga Anadel with the Tangrowth is fantastic. I probably could have EV'd this thing to potentially KO the Naga Anadel. And had I KO'd it with uh, Tangrowth, I mean, I'm in fantastic spot the rest of the battle here. I just go out to my stack attack. And now I could have sacked off my Magirna. That is an option for me. Um, and it probably should have been my number one option. My problem was letting this thing get a speed boost or a special attack boost. So I couldn't let that happen. So here, he will go for the flamethrower. And I know I could take two. I have some special defense investment and quite a bit of HP investment into the stack attacka. So I see I can take one and he gets the burn. 
And where this actually hurts now is, after the burn damage, I'm not sure if I can take another flamethrower. So, I click Gyro Ball here. Now, one of two things. I could have clicked Trick Room. And I could have set up a Trick Room. But my main thing was, if I live, I want to kill this Naga on Adele. So, I just go for the Gyro Ball to kill the Naga on Adele. It was pretty much my only option because... If I go for Trick Room, I live, yes, I have the potential to Reverse Sweep, potentially, but if he ends up, if I end up dying, now this Naga Anadel's starting to set up. So my main goal was, don't let this Naga Anadel set up. I can't have it set up and end up pretty much just sweeping me. Here he's going to go out into his Alolan Ninetales, he's going to set up the Hail. So... Now, I'm going to end up dying to Hail this turn, which just makes that burn even worse because I could have actually ended up living a turn of Hail had I not get burned, set up a Trick Room. So, this Nine Tails would have ended up falling uh, to my stack attacker, but that's all hindsight now. Nothing I can do about it. The burn sucks, but it's Pokemon. So stack attack is going to fall, unfortunately. Uh, had the potential to do a lot more versus his team. So I go out to my Zapdos here. And this is where I pretty much started playing without thinking. Um, and it's mostly due in part to my mistakes. I figured this was probably a Choice Scarf Ninetales. Um, and I never really actually tested it out. So he's going to go for the Freeze Dry. It's going to pretty much just do a lot to my Ninetales. I'm firing off a Discharge. He does get the Freeze. Thankfully, I thought out. I would have lost my mind had I been frozen and stayed thawed. So I fire off the Discharge, and this is to get damage off on this. Um, Ninetales, so... Now this, last, this next turn, it's just more dumb play on my part. I'm already triggered over some of the hacks that have happened. Just... Lost my cool, I guess. And Zapdos will fall to another freeze dry this next turn. The issue lies when I decide to go out to my Tangrowth this next turn, thinking I can live a freeze dry. I'm like, ah, Nine Tails isn't that strong, special attack wise. Um, when I could have just gone into my Yachi Salamence, clicked Earthquake. And then kept my Tangrowth for the rest of the game. But that really didn't go through my mind. As I just decided, hey, I can click Sludge Bomb, take out the Ninetales. It's not that strong. Uh, false, actually. Um, Tangrowth gets blown back by the Freeze Dry. So me thinking I could live a Freeze Dry was incorrect. And now... I sacked off my Tangrowth when I could have actually kept it alive to take on the rest of his team. Because I it, he's probably the... Let's forget the Moxie. It might. I'm not sure. Uh, I know Heracross does. Um, so I just got to my Salamence. Now, I finally click Earthquake when I should have gone into this before the Tangrowth. He's going to go for the Freeze Drive. My Yachi Bear is going to activate. I'm going to live with 3 HP. Kill it with Earthquake. And the hail actually runs up this turn. So, in hindsight, I mean, I would have lost my Salamence to the hail had I gone into it. And the Ninetales probably, well, I mean, the Ninetales dies, but now I got Tangrowth Magirna versus Pinsir, Mudsdale, and Suicune. So, I mean, in hindsight, I'm still in a bad position here. So the Moxie boost comes in now. This is where the unfortunate side of not having a Z move comes in. So had I had like maybe Dragonia, actually, I would have died to freeze dry anyway. Um, had I had Outrage potentially, I might have had a chance with a crit to KO this um, Suicune. I mean. 
a chance. That's all I would have had. I don't think I would have had much other than that. So I just go for the Dragon Claw here. You guys see how much damage that does. That was a critical hit. So not even a plus one crit was able to save me. And I'm fairly confident his Nine Tails was Choice Scarfed, uh, mostly for the Dragon Dance Salamence. So we're going to end up falling 3-0 to Randy in week six of the XBL, our first week a part of the league, which is a little tad unfortunate. I mean, hacks happen in Pokemon. There's nothing I can do over that. Uh, just came with the right prep, especially uh, with stuff like the Scarf Nine Tails, Stealth Rock, uh, Metagross. Because the hazards, I mean, do affect me. And I did make a couple stupid mistakes. One was severely crippling my Magearna. Had I kept my Magearna around the rest of the game, it really would have ended up different. But I mean, I just didn't want to take that risk with Naga Del being able to set up very easily. But it is what it is. No, no, no seriousness to try hard in this league. This is just a fun league. To just try out a bunch of new mods. First time I'm using Trick Room ever in any sort of battle, so that was actually an interesting uh, team option that I may try in future leagues. But if you guys enjoyed week six of the XBL and you guys are excited for me to finish up this league, I think I end up with um, YouTube fan Nate, Kyle I, and Invivid, I think might end up my season. I'm not 100% sure. I know Kyle and Mewtwo fan Nate are on my schedule, Kyle being the last week. Uh, but with all that being said, guys, I am Johnny GB, and I'm out.